Hey, what's up everybody? Craig from Flying Wheels. Thanks for watching my channel. Thanks for always supporting me and subscribing and giving me the thumbs up. So a bunch of you guys have been asking me, how did I start my car dealership? Uh, I started it when I was 23 on my own with almost no money. So I'm gonna give you a, little, a couple hints, some tidbits and of information to tell you how I became a car dealer. It goes back four generations, and not that anyone in my family was a car dealer, but my grandfather, my great-grandfather came here from Italy. He was an auto mechanic. He owned a garage and a couple gas stations. My great-grandfather is an auto tech teacher. My father's an auto tech teacher. My father is an auto body, uh, my brother is an auto body technician, and I hate working on cars, so I had zero interest in that at all. I have owned several businesses. Um, through college, I paid my way through college. Uh, I owned a painting company. And before that, I was flipping cars in high school to make gas money and pay for my insurance. So I've always had to foot the bill for everything on my own and I've had to be um, creative in finding ways to make money. So what I would do is buy a car. My father bought a car with me. My first car was a 69 Mustang and we uh, restored it, brought it back to life and it was a little too fast for me. My mother made us sell it so I bought a Ford Probe. Uh, with the extra money, I bought a uh, Ford Probe and a motorcycle. Sold both of those. I had a little bit more money. And I bought a 69 Firebird and restored that. And I sold that all while I was in high school. So I was actually making a little bit more money than most of my friends were through high school. Not that I had any money to, to spend things on, but a little bit more than most people just from flipping cars. Through college, eBay had started. So I learned that I could go to the public auctions or go on the Want Advertiser or Craigslist was just starting and I could buy a car shopping. Um, I knew what they were worth, but not so much I knew what they were worth, I knew what I could sell them for. And if I knew what I could sell them for, I knew what I could buy them for. If I could buy it for less than I could sell it, then I knew I could make some money. And that's how I started. So all through high school, all through college, I'd buy a car, I'd drive it, I'd get bored with it, and I'd sell it for more than I paid for it, and then I'd go buy something else and save the profits, and then go spend that on certain things. Maybe another car, or a second vehicle, uh, maybe a toy for myself. I even did this back in middle school with four-wheelers and dirt bikes, and in elementary school with bicycles. I'd buy a bicycle from a friend, I'd clean it or sell it, clean it, fix it, sell it for more money, and then buy another bicycle or another set of rollerblades. So basically what I'm doing now in my 30s is something I have always done my entire life. All right, so let's get into it. You guys all wanna know how I started a car dealership with no money. I had no money when I was 23. So a little bit, I mean, when I say no money, I wasn't poor, but I was pretty much a poor college kid trying to work to get by day to day. I was working for, um, a company about 70 hours a week in sales in Florida and on the side I would buy a car and I would drive it for a little bit and I'd flip it and I usually had two cars so I'd buy one and fix it while I was driving the other then sell that one that I fixed and drive the next one and I just keep rotating one over the other um, well what happened was I realized that I started to make more money flipping cars than I was working 70 hours a week for somebody else and I thought to myself, if I work 70 hours a week for myself, now I have to be self-motivated, if I work 70 hours a week for myself, I would make way more money than I would making somebody else rich. And that's what I did. I took the risk, I jumped all in, I had no real responsibilities, I had a girlfriend, no kids and you know, no giant mortgage. So it was worth the risk for me to quit my job, which I wasn't enthusiastic about anyway. I wasn't enthralled or something I didn't really want to do for my whole life anyway. So it was worth me taking the risk and just going all in head first and trying to open my own car dealership. Now, while I was in the process of this, I kept my job because I wanted that income. So it took me three to four months to actually get all my ducks in a row. And by that, I mean my insurance, my bond, get my actual license. You have to find a place of business. Uh, so all the requirements that I needed, and, and it took me a while just to figure out what I needed and how to get it, took me months. So I don't want to just quit my job right away and get started in a car dealership. I, it was a slow transition. And once I was ready and had my ball rolling and, and had my dealer's license, I quit my job and I went right at it. Now how did I do with this with no money? I had a little bit of money, a couple thousand dollars here and there, but a couple thousand dollars isn't enough, really enough to start a car dealership. How did I get the money to really get this ball rolling? Well, starting a new business, no bank is gonna lend you any money. It, it, they just don't do it. I went to bank after bank and no one would give me a loan. They didn't care about me. I had a poor business plan and no one knew who I was and 
Nobody wants to give you anything until you prove to them you can give them something back. And that's why the bank never gave me anything. So how did I get going? Credit cards. I don't recommend you get into credit card debt. Don't do it. But I did it smart. So the credit card checks. You know, sometimes your credit card company will mail you those checks. Zero percent interest. Well, that's how I got started. It took me a couple thousand dollars to get my insurance and my licenses. So I used my thousands of dollars that I had in cash on that stuff. But then the problem was I didn't have the money to buy a car. So what I did was I used my credit card checks and wrote it out to myself at zero percent. I didn't max my credit cards because you don't want to max your credit cards out. I went under 75% of the, of the credit card limit. 0% for a year, I bought two cars. Two cars led to three cars, three cars led to six cars, six to 12, and here I am today with 40 plus cars. I try to keep no overhead and no debt. If it's possible for you to do it, that's what I recommend doing. All right, let's talk about those credit cards real quick that I just said. I do not max out my credit cards, and I also didn't charge my credit cards. I didn't go out and swipe my credit cards at 7% or 9% or up to 20% interest on credit cards. That's not what I did, all right? I went out, I get those checks in the mail from my credit card company that says 0% interest for 12 months. 0%, that's free money, free money for 12 months. So why not use it? Why use my own money or go to the bank and get a loan when I can get 0% for my credit card for a year? So that's what I did. I went and I cashed the check or go deposit in my bank account for 75% of my credit limit at 0% for a year. I go buy a car or two cars and then you know what? That, that loan's 0% for a year. So as long as that's paid off within the year, I'm good. It cost me no money out of my own pocket and it cost me no money in interest too. So that's what I did to buy my first couple cars. 0%, I'd go get 75% of that credit card limit, write the check out to myself. Now I had money in my bank account. I went to the auction and I bought cars. And then uh, within that year, I went and paid off the, the original initial debt with the money I had made. The other thing is some auctions allow you to seven days to pay for a vehicle. So when I lived in Florida, I would go to places that would sell, that would, I would be able to buy a car at the auction not have to write a check for seven days. So if I wanted to make a quick 500 bucks or $750, which is nothing on top of a car, I could. And then I go back next week to go buy more cars and write a check that day for the cars I bought last week. So really all I'm doing is they're giving me a car for free. I'd go sell it, get paid on it, go back next week and pay them with the money that I made from the car that I sold that I never paid for yet. It's called a float. You're floating your money. So you're not actually spending any money out of pocket. It is costing you nothing of your own money. It's amazing. So I will go and spend somebody else's money at 0% and then make sure they get paid back because you don't want to, you like to have your uh, credit. You want good credit with everybody. Don't ruin your credit, okay? Make sure you pay your debts, number one, always. So don't go out and just get a bunch of credit cards and rack up a ton of credit card debt. You don't want any debt, that's the trick. No debt, I own all these cars because I don't want any debt. I don't wanna to have to pay anybody. So try to keep the payments as little as possible. Keep the overhead low. Slow and calculated growth is what I've always done and that's my, that's my trick to this business. Slow and calculated growth. Don't go out and get a $10,000 uh, rent every single month. Don't go out and get a million dollar line of credit. You don't want that stuff, you don't need that stuff, all right? There are people that already have money that go out and buy car dealerships. Those are the people aren't me. That's not me and that's probably not you if you're watching this video. Start small, that's the trick. Don't overcompensate for things that you don't have. Don't be the big guy on the big horse. Be the small guy that nobody thinks about, all right? So what happens is, I keep my overhead low. When I first started, again, I would start with one car that led to two, two to four, four to eight, eight to 16 cars, and here I am today. All right, don't quit your job. Do everything on the side. Make it side work until you're ready to grow. Everything that happened to me happened because I had to get to the next step. Not because I wanted to get to the next step. I was pretty comfortable. And once you get comfortable, it's not such a good thing, but a lot of times I'm forced, my hand is forced for me to go out and move on. So yes, I lived in Florida, I owned a car dealership, I owned a car dealership, but really all that was, was a storage unit. In Florida, I got a storage unit, it was two bays, wide enough, and the dimensions fit large enough for the state to approve my dealer license. Uh, it was also zoned commercial. 
I went and I got the insurance and the bond and everything I needed and I went and I got my license at the dealer auctions and I went and I bought two cars at my first dealer auction ever. Uh, from there I cleaned them, I fixed them, and then I sold them for a little bit more. And then I bought two or three more cars. But I never overextended myself, ever. I've always played it safe because it's my money. It's all I have and I don't want to lose it. So yes, you do have to take risks, but calculated risks. You don't want to just jump out and spend all your money, all right? Blow your load, as people say. Don't let it all go. Be smart about it. So here I am in a storage warehouse. Most of the cars in my driveway at home. Unfortunately, my neighbors didn't really care too much about it. Uh, eventually, I got to the point where all those cars didn't fit in a storage unit or in my driveway anymore. I had to get a bigger place. So what did I do? I didn't go out and get a car lot, a big giant parking lot in a big building. I got a bigger storage unit that was zoned commercially. I could fit six cars inside and actually I could fit 30 cars outside. So I was there for five years in a, in a giant uh, industrial warehouse uh, in the middle of nowhere in an industrial complex. But everything sold online anyway, so it really didn't matter. Eventually that first four cars that I, when I moved back to New Hampshire, I had four cars or so that I, I could store them all inside my warehouse. So I didn't even have any outside storage. I didn't need it. It was a thousand dollar a month rent, which drove me crazy because I was so nervous to have a thousand dollar a month rent on an industrial building that I didn't know. I was basically starting my own business again because when I was in Florida, I grew it enough that I could sell it. So I ended up selling it to move back home to New Hampshire. Uh, so I started the business from nothing in Florida. I grew it up. I paid off all my debts and I sold the business for a profit. Now learning and getting all that knowledge over the three or four years that I was doing that in Florida helped me move back to New Hampshire. I sold my car dealership. So now that's somebody that has the money to do it. They walked alongside with me. They saw how it was all done. They bought the business turnkey. They were making money. That's not me. And again, that's probably not you if you're watching this video. Moved back to New Hampshire, started from scratch again. But I knew, and I had a little bit more money this time, that I didn't want to start at two cars. So I bought four cars that fit inside, I cleaned them, I fixed them, and slowly it started growing, four to eight, eight to 16. And I had six cars stored inside, 30 cars outside, and then five years later, I had too many cars and not enough space. So my landlord called and said, you get too many cars. Well, that's kind of a good problem to have. I mean, if you have no cars, it's a good problem too. It means you sold everything, but you're never gonna make any more money if you're not selling everything. So my landlord says, hey, you gotta drop some cars. You can't have this many here. So basically what he's telling me is reduce the size of my business, which isn't something that I was willing to do. So realistically, if you read between the lines, he's telling me I need a bigger place. So that's what I did. For the next year, I searched around until I found the place I wanted, and I bought this building, this lot, paved the parking lot. The place was run down. I bought it cheap, brought it back to life. Uh, it was a con basically a condemned building on a pile of mud. I, I um, flattened everything down. I paved it all, and I brought the building back to life, and here I am uh, with a car lot. And I still have my other place, the industrial park, because that one was making money too. So why stop there when that was already working? I had something that was working for me there and I moved here and things have grown here. It's always been a risk. So I've always been nervous to start up and keep going and, and take the leap. But every time it's paid off because it was slow. I didn't jump in with something that I wasn't sure that I could do. I, I jumped in with things that I could kind of fall back if I needed to. So yes, I bought a building, but I knew I could afford the building. Actually, the mortgage here is less than the rent at the other place. So that's how I knew and I was confident in doing so. I didn't go out and spend half a million dollars on a building hoping it would work. I went out and spent half that on something that I knew I would be able to afford, which is what the bank wants to see too. So that $5,000 credit card check that I used 10 years ago, has brought me all of this. And here I am today, I own everything. Not that I am a multi-millionaire and, and everything is grand, but everything's pretty good. I don't have any serious complaints except for the videos that you guys watch and see me complain about. So when you watch this video, like I said, don't go out and rack up a ton of credit card debt. That's not the trick. Just remember, slow and calculated growth. Do what you can do, do what you can afford. If you're starting out on your own, Start small, start with a couple cars. That's all you need to do in any business. Start small, all right? 
So if you're gonna start your own car dealership, figure out what the requirements are in your state, all right? Start at home, start while you have a job, start while you're paying your bills, do it small until one supplements the other. When you're making more money selling cars than you are at your desk job, now you know it's time to quit your desk job and go full steam ahead at your car dealership. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any more questions, comment down below. Let me know. I'd be happy to help you out. As always, don't forget to subscribe. If this video was helpful at all, give me a thumbs up so other people get to see it. If you hate this video, no, still thumbs up. But tell me why you hate it so I can change things for the next one. You guys are awesome. Thank you for always watching my videos. If you need anything else, comment down below and let me know. So give me some ideas for our next videos. I'll see you guys later.